Khan Asians. Hey everyone, this is Norby of Commitment Church, and you're listening and watching to CTCM Radio, a station for all nations. And we're here today on another episode of Worship Team Foundations. And this is basically a show where we dialogue with worship team members of Commitment um, and others, you know, friends of Commitment as well, in worship teams around the world where we um, dialogue about different things that we like to learn and grow from, situations, even give you some foundational tips and tricks to the trade um, to get you to um, better either lead well, um, you play well, sing well, whatever it is that um, the Lord has led you into uh, into ministry through worship. Um, we're here to talk on all those things um, that you know pertain to that um, particular ministry, and we are happy today to um, have our friends and our fellow bass player, guitar player, um, dabbles with a little bit of everything, has a little bit of history with um, with uh, many different styles of music from the past, present, and now in the future. Um, ushering him in into what is now the modern scene of worship ministry and worship music. Um, so we're going to get into a lot of different little things that he's going to share with us, his experience of, you know, where he comes from and um, his upbringing. He's going to share with us also just how uh, he found the Lord and how he was able to then um, adapt to what is now the most modern case of playing in a worship band, um, which is not the same as playing in any other band, even outside of uh, church. So James Preston, he's been with us for some years now. How long would you say you've been with us now? 11, maybe 12 years. 11 or 12 years. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And, yeah. um, you know, I remember way back when we started, um, we only had like I mean, not even a handful of musicians. We were just really getting started coming off of uh, backing tracks. Mm -hmm. I remember if you guys remember the first origin episode of Worship Team Foundations where we had Pastor Cedric, we had myself, Brittany, and we had uh, Mark Woodard. And Mark Woodard um, was in the worship ministry as the lead, um, and he used to lead us very well in the beginning where God, you know, started and founded this church through Pastor Cedric. And Mark, you know, he had a talent for singing. He has a talent uh, and an ear for music, um, but they didn't have the musicians um, to be able to lead worship with live instrumentation. Um, probably not even that many vocalists. I think they started with like Ms. Lisa Brown, um, First Lady Brown, as I call her, um, and some other uh, ladies um, from the church in the beginning of the ministry until, of course, later on down the line, God brought me into the mix here at Commitment about 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. And, um, and God started, you know, birthing what is today um, our commitment worship ministry, um, which we affectionately uh, called through some projects that we did, Primary Worship Band, um, which that's a whole separate thing on its own. But it's a beautiful thing to see how God has brought us from the very humble beginnings of commitment all the way down to coming into um, what is today's worship team. Um, so, James, how did you uh, start with music? How did you start playing? Um, I started off playing uh, when I was growing up. Um, my grandfather was a famous jazz musician. He played sax. And uh, What was his name? Uh, Jimmy Preston. All right. A famous jazz musician in Philadelphia. He played all over the country and stuff like that. Awesome. And from, he started from the mid-30s on to the 40s mm -hmm. to almost toward the end uh, and almost into the early 50s, right when rock and roll would start coming in. Wow. And uh, he played he played alto he played alto sax, and then he he come he came to know Christ, he came to know God, and his whole life his whole life turned around. Mm. And then from there he trained and started as a pastor, and he started as a pastor with a few other people, members of our family. He started a church called Victory Baptist Church in Philadelphia. Wow, very good. And uh, but and my dad played drums a, a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, he just kind of messed around with it, and mm -hmm. he just just messed around. He, you know, he ain't take any further. Mm -hmm. Me, I wanted to play guitar. Okay, and I wanted 
And like for a long time, when I was a kid, when I was a kid growing up, mostly downtown in the neighborhood, there was this pawn shop. And every time passed after school, I used to look at this guitar. One day I'm gonna play guitar. One day I want to play to learn how to play guitar. And I begged my folks. I begged them to please, please can I play electric. And they said no, 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 no. Now what? What year? What year was this? Oh, this is around about in the early oh, oh, in the early sixties, right? Sixty. Okay. Three sixty four. Yeah, and it's it's that it was right at the height where the Beatles first came out. All right, and I want to you know, and I want to play guitar. So I used to take like a, I used to take like a broom handle and and, and do like air guitar. See, there's a meme going around where kids back where when I grew up, I was I grew up in the eighties. So, you know, there was a meme going around when you give a kid a choice between video games or a guitar. And this man right here didn't even have the choice of video games because back then they weren't even Nintendos back then. That was different. It was the guitar. Mm -hmm. So you picked the guitar. Yeah. And fast forward now you're going into um, playing in the scenes and and doing different yeah. things. You play with bands. And yeah. And over time I played when I left. Uh, I when I left I left Philly in, in '74. I moved to Allentown. Got a job because I, you know, because of my real job, I was a de in the dental field, so I was a dental technician. I went to trade school and graduated in '72, and and that was kind of weird because during that time the draft was just ending. Okay. And by that spring of '72, I got my draft notice. Okay. And uh, military for you millennials that don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got, yeah, I got my draft notice, so I went in for the physical, and and by the time my number came at the draft, by that, by that, almost that summer, they kind of cut out the draft, so yeah, I kind of in a way lucked out on that. Okay. And uh, so, and I was still learning playing guitar. I was not quite into playing with a band yet right. until I start building up my skill set and building up my confidence and stuff like that. Okay. And because uh, when I got my guitar, man, I folks said, turn that thing off. I don't really have any music. Yeah. You know, so. I was with the drums and yeah, pans it, and it, pots. Yeah, and I did that too. When I, I did that too growing up. Then yeah. my, my grandmother's pots and pans used yeah. to get on me about that. Wow. And um, so I left home when I was like 19. I moved, I left home a um, place called Allentown, and mm -hmm. I worked for a dental uh, dental lab outfit in Allentown. Okay. And I met a friend, I met some guy that lived in Allentown, we became friends. And uh, he was associated with a group called Up With People. It was a big singing group, like a folk singing group during the '60s. Okay. So I went to one of their shows, and they were they were looking for they were looking for musicians. Mm. So I didn't. Okay. So I signed up, and then I got a letter from them that said somehow I went to the auditions, I got accepted, and I got on tour. So I had saved a little money, so I went to uh, Quebec, Canada. Mm. And that's where the headquarters is at train and we then then they've got a whole bunch of people and we just travel around the country, travel up to mostly the northwest. What kind of uh, music did you guys play? It was mostly folk uh, rock, some light rock, but mostly contemporary, mostly like on a little bit on the folk and countryside. Okay. I was playing bass, had a good size horn section and All stuff right. like that. But unfortunately I didn't stay on the tour that long because okay. I got sick. So that kind of put the kibosh on that. Yeah. And I just recovered. So I just kind of, and just continue working and practicing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they start messing around with a whole bunch of guys just jamming around. And yeah. all of a sudden, one thing led to another. And then all of a sudden, it got with a couple bands and stuff like that. We just, I was a, like a 60s, we was doing like 60s music and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of kink, we had kinks, Beatles, Stones, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of rock and stuff, rock dance music. Then was playing in bars and stuff like that. So 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 you got sick and then you your tour came to an end mm -hmm. and then you started just gigging like locally. Yeah. But you went back to Allentown or Philly. Yeah, I went back to Allentown. Okay. Yeah. And then you started playing on the scene there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I playing on the scene there. Now, how many years did you do that for? I, I did that for quite a few years, quite a okay. few years. 
when did you then start i did you because i met you here in jersey mm -hmm. so how did how did you transition from like allentown coming out to jersey well i didn't run like i said i i still did some i still did some traveling around okay then I, I went to New Orleans. I played in New Orleans. I got okay. a job out there, but I didn't get any bands or clubbing out there in New Orleans. Close to a year, then, I, then my grandfather got sick, so I was asked to come back home. Okay. So I moved back to Philly for a while. I gotcha. And I got, you know, I got a, and I got a job in Philly. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, from, and then from there, I kind of I put it away for a while. Right. I was kind of helping my parents out, plus I was helping my great grandmother out because yeah. she was getting sick. Okay. So I was I was living in a house with her, kind of help her out financially. Yeah. You know, so I didn't. So then from there, then I got one guy in the neighborhood that I knew, and they was getting the band together. So we start got a little band together and start playing around a few clubs in Philly. Nothing. Okay. Nothing fantastic. Right. But when I was growing up, I did got born again, but I kind of backslide over the years as I got older. There was a lot of temptation and mm -hmm. and all kinds of craziness with, uh, that was going on. Yeah. And so I just kind of, you know, I just, I just didn't want to commit myself to God. Right. At the time. Right. Okay. You know, because I, I, it, I don't know, it was kind of, it was a lot of, it was a lot of craziness and a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that was going on in my life. And, yeah trying to get relationships that didn't work out right. and stuff like that. So I just kind of concentrate on doing music and just working. Yeah. And that's all I did for a good while. So I guess from the time I met you, you then from Philly came to Jersey and you had a friend, a mutual friend of this church back then? I had, well, how I came, I had a, I had a, a guy that was in the dental business, dental laboratory business. And we worked at the same company, and he was uh, he was supervisor of the department that made metalwork framework for dentures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, and like he he was not into music or anything, but mm -hmm. I knew him, so we kind of kept touch off and on. Sure. And then how I got how I moved how I moved over, how I moved over here. I lived in North Philly for a good while. Mm -hmm. So uh, I worked for a company called uh, Correctional Dental uh, over in Trenton. They had a they had a contract with the, all the prisons in Jersey. Mm -hmm. So I was living in Philly, and the money was good. I was making I was making good money. Okay. And then my super so my the manager uh, asked me think you know, think about moving over here. So I moved over in Jersey in Bordentown to get close to the job. This gotcha. way I. So I had to be doing a lot of traveling yeah. back and forth and cut stuff. Cut the commute down. Yeah, cut the commute down. So I had to be doing a lot of traveling around and stuff like that. Right. And then, then all of a sudden, and during that time, I met another friend that I knew years and years and years ago. And he was interested in music. And then I we got together and he was building a recording studio. Mm. So and a little bit out of time, he passed away now. Okay. But he, uh, so we got a little studio, and then one thing led to another. We start, start a band, and we doing. Then we start doing like like Christian music, but it was a little bit on a rock on a rocky side. Gotcha. Got that for a while, and and things was okay for a while, but all of a sudden it just kind of yeah, it's kind of fizzled out. Came to a halt. Yeah, it yeah. came to a halt. So then I guess I remember years ago, um, we started a. Kind of like a, if you was to think like an after school program, but it, it's more of an after church program. Um, we used to do on Sundays once in a while. I think every quarter um, we used to open up a shed. And for those who don't know what a shed is, a shed is basically a uh, an event where we just open up the church and let uh, you know every musician from the area to come out. Yeah, at some in some point, you know, it became such a popular trend. In churches that we had, you know, a movement where sheds just pop up out of nowhere in different churches, and we'll have like five or six drummers, five or six of every instrument there. 
Um, and we, we wanted to do it as an outreach opportunity and to just uh, get to know people in the community, get to know people also in the church, maybe that they were a little shy or maybe sitting on the fence about joining the worship ministry. So we did this um, ministry where we opened up the shed and um, that's where I met you. I had you come in. I think you were coming already but um, to the church and um, I opened up this ministry where we had you come in and you I remember you with your uh, with your wheel your your what is it like your amp on wheels and you just rolled it in with your mm -hmm. Gibson guitar mm -hmm. and we were set up on the floor and we had the drums out and we had our worship team and some some friends come out and you just started I just started doing some Latino like it wasn't nothing like worshipful it was just jamming on yeah. some jazz tunes and just you know just trying to um, you know, basically, it's like an over-glorified jam session, just mm -hmm. having people come by and just mm -hmm. sing or play or whatever. And this guy starts busting out some, like, Cardo Santana riffs on top of my Latino chops. And mm -hmm. we started jamming and having a great time. And that's where I think even Pastor was here that day. And he pretty much, I think, you know, when we got to know you that night, you know, it turns out you played bass, you played guitar. But you were kind of like, okay, what am I going to do to... Because the pastor gave you like an option of like, hey, I would love you to join the worship team. I know I wanted you to join the worship team. Bring those chops and those uh, riffs over to the team. And our, our worship ministry has identified as, um, you know, almost like an X type of them. Like when it comes to genre, we don't really touch on one specific genre. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, like the modern scene in the worship ministries now, it's all contemporary kind of uh you know, focused into what was what was a, a movement in Australia, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, the contemporary sound of Australia started shifting over here. People like Hillsong and stuff like that um started, you know, bringing in their um folk music from their churches mm -hmm. and became a a genre what we call now worship or contemporary christian music and um and that that has been the scene for a very long time now it's starting to evolve again into a little bit more of a edm you know um with contemporary with a little bit of pop you know mixed and mingled in there um some cases even like when you think of artists like kb he's a hip-hop artist for uh for you know in the christian um world but he brings in like that contemporary edm into his hip-hop and um it was really interesting because back then before it was a thing to to to, to mix in all these genres we had you come in, start riffing. No, it wasn't even like asked for. He just started riffing, mm -hmm. just Latino and awesome, like you know, real bluesy and 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 into what we called contemporary worship, mm -hmm. and it just brought it alive. It just came into a different place where we totally welcomed it because our vision has always been to be in uh, a church for all nations, and um, and as our tagline for the radio, you know. Uh, you know, we are a station for all nations. So, mm -hmm. so we always welcome all the diversity of the music scene um, to glorify God. So, when you started playing, Pastor Ten told you what? Like he, you play guitar, you play bass, and he told you to play both. Now, right? He said, "Yeah, he he, he told me uh, he told me to play both," and I I did that for a while. Yeah, and uh, but at the same time, it was some things that Pastor had a long. Uh, Cause he talked to me for a good. We had a meeting together. Talk. We talked for a good two, three hours in this office, close to three hours. Yeah. Because my there was I was really on the fence about a lot of stuff because a lot of the Christian music I really didn't really care for. It yeah. just it's it's it to me it sounded like generic. Yeah, exactly. It sounded and and, and it sound it sounded like all it sounded like the same. Mm-hmm. And and I did want it to be into into in the worship team, but I want I wanted to earn that place. Yeah, I yeah. want I wanted to earn it. So he said, "There's some things that, you know I need you to do." So I started, you know, just knuckling down and just yeah, do what needed to be done. Yeah, if you don't know, when you're in pastor's office, two or three hours, like the scripture says, like one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day to God. In Pastor Cedric's office, two or three hours is about two, three minutes of your time, almost. It feels like that. When you're there, you're just personal. You're just going in deep into just things about yourself. And most mm -hmm. of the time when I get with Pastor Cedric on Thursday mornings, um, we meet about all kinds of things. And before we even talk music or talk any worship things, he's digging deep and I'm digging deep 
into mm-hmm. our own spirit well you know spiritual well-being mm-hmm. our growth and I, I you know that's something that he makes a point to do for all of us right mm-hmm. like we all get together and we have conversations that deal with our uh, spiritual growth and our personal you know um growth in Christ so mm-hmm. I think that once once you got here I think that was the one of the biggest things that I think maybe turned your life around is that outside of it being just another gig because a lot of times you got musicians that'll come through and they'll just treat this as as just another gig Mm -hmm. it it was so cool to see and hear you say i want to earn my way in the proper way i don't want to come in and just start playing an instrument Mm -hmm. to be just a part of another band but i want to i want to get in in into into what god has called me out for i have other things that i want to express a part of who i am and i think Mm -hmm. that's beautiful that you saw that early on yeah yeah. You know, I think we have a we have a um back then we used to call it the the what is it the um spiritual growth process mm-hmm. and um Larry, I think uh Carl Barberi mm-hmm. and, and a and a and some more other you know other men leadership and and elders that used to be a part of and some of them are still are a part of the um the spiritual growth process is now what we call I think is the uh I forget. There's like they change the name every time, but it's it's a. It, I'll probably put it right here on the screen for you. <laughs> you can sign up, and whenever you are in town, or if you want to be a part of a church and you're looking for a home church, you can always uh, see us on Commitment um, Church dot org and um, and just sign up for some of our classes. And they continue to be such a gem, such a treasure trove of information, and and just being able to connect with God. Um, so I know that you started then playing with us um, for some years. Um, on and off, you know, Pastor said, hey, you play guitar and when we need you to play bass, you play bass and you mm-hmm. you were versatile in both. And then you started seeing some growth. I think from that moment on, we started seeing some more people, some answered prayers started mm-hmm. happening in the team where we start started seeing more of singers come, mm-hmm. more musicians come in. Mm-hmm. And then eventually we started um, even writing our own songs, you know, as you've heard so many times in our in our other episodes, of, we've talked about how we are an actively recording um worship ministry um that writes their own songs for the people here on church at church and um you know it's it was a challenge years ago from pastor cedric to you know as he affectionately says let's get off the dime let's use your talents and if i can do a 30 30 to 40 minute message you can do a three to four minute song and that was Mm -hmm. the challenge and then from there, I think what November uh, was uh, early, uh, late October into November December, we did our first EP. Now, interestingly enough, when you said, "Well, you know, I had issues with Christian music the way it was because it was so generic and blended," it kind of started off that way with us, right? Like we yeah. just kind of started doing an album based upon the vision of giving people music that they can connect to the sermons right mm-hmm. so a lot of the the songs didn't require them to be this elaborate arrangement mm-hmm. of music like the way we're used to coming from mm-hmm. um but we kind of like you know and i and i admire even what you what you were able to do is bring your talents to the table and just kind of submit to the process and give you know a lend your talent to the lord playing music that you weren't even comfortable playing right mm-hmm. like it was like weird you know to to have to kind of almost dumb down what you know yeah. to then go into this whole project and we did mm-hmm. about and you can see them i think above me here we did about maybe three projects one was an ep that had like three or four songs and then we had a couple other albums that progressively i don't know you can chime in like we started getting better and better and better mm-hmm. you know they, not, they didn't stay the same bland kind of mm-hmm. you know um approach because what we what our challenge was originally was to mm-hmm. um make music that would um you know encourage people to uh follow the scriptures as they were um on sunday so mm-hmm. when they listen to this music is exactly the representation they got from sunday morning worship mm-hmm. um and and it was a culmination of a whole year of work right mm-hmm. um so after that i think this is when we started rebuilding right we had we got to a point where you know like and this is probably the more controversial part of the conversation where people don't really like to talk about it man like there's people that they'll go to church and then bands break up they'll go to church and you know ministries break up right nobody likes to talk about stuff like that Mm -hmm. you know nobody likes to talk about um their feelings nobody likes to expose their their feelings of whatever you know has been in their hearts 
sometimes frustrations, sometimes disappointments. Sometimes it has even nothing to do with the church. It's more like just things that you carry from the past. You mm -hmm. carry from family or upbringings mm -hmm. or just experiences that all of a sudden, you know, you find yourself, you know, uh, between a rock and a hard place in ministry because things start crumbling around you.